<laughs> there you go. Did you enjoy the Baptized Jesse Taylor song? Yeah. We used to do that when a live band. Baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained a soul, and Satan lost a good right arm. Amen? He gave his heart to the Lord. So when we study, we're going to study about baptism. I'm buying time for my wife to bring the prop. But anyway, so I've got a couple of little illustrations for you, and we'll do it just before we release the service, okay? So I'm going to teach, and then we're going to show the prop, okay? And show exactly. Very good. Dun, da, da, da. Here she is, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I tell you what, when the Bible says that he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing, isn't she wonderful? Come on. Huh? That's plenty, just as long as it go under. And <laughs> look what I got for the magic vessel. Now, what does that look like? Yeah, but guess what? It's been converted, so it is an oyster shooter glass. Not a whiskey, not a bourbon glass. It's a oyster shooter glass. And the reason why I got it is, besides all ice oyster shooters, is it's got a lid on it. And so before I go to teaching, see, when we were human beings without Jesus in our heart, we were a locked off vessel. We had an empty space in our heart. You see? And then somebody came along and shared Jesus a little bit. And then somebody came and grandpa preached Jesus. And then pop, you opened up a little bit. And now God is open to be able to change the inside of us. So we'll get to that little illustration later on. You ready to get in the word? Amen. Everyone hold up your Bible if you got them. If not, just hold up yourself in the, in the Lord. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that there's no classes today. This is the class. And we Lord, that you would bless our understanding. Lord, anoint these lips of clay so I may speak in an understanding way, Painting pictures so that we understand the, the ways of your kingdom. Father, we're going to baptize today, as you well know. And you've already anointed to the water. You've already warmed it up. You've already gotten our hearts ready. Lord, that apprehension we might be feeling of, I don't know if I should or I shouldn't. That's a key that you should. And Lord, we just thank you that you'll take the word of God and you'll make it rich to us today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said... series called New Creation Realities, and it's called Baptized in Newness of Life. You see, there are two of you. Everyone say, there are? Yeah, there's the old you before you met Jesus, and there's the new you when you met Jesus. Can you say amen? Now, let me ask you, good question, which one of those two is running your life? Oh. Whoa, the, the new one, letting Jesus take the lead. Can you say amen? And so in doing that, doesn't he break the path open before us? Didn't he say, I will go before you? I will make a way where there was no way. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death or destruction. But God says, I am the way, the truth and the life. So we focus on Jesus, then he becomes the answer and the clarity of our understanding in life. And we're supposed to have a good life, aren't we? Yes. And some of us in the past, it wasn't so good, but now it's a new beginning. Amen. And so baptism is one of those things. All right. So let's get in there. Let's pop up our scripture. Baptized in the newness of life. So greetings to you, church family. Today we're going to witness the baptism of parts of our body 
And as the body is being baptized, the Bible says to rejoice with those that rejoice. It's a great time because it literally is an outward testimony and a sealing of your Christianity. When somebody is baptized in water and they come out of the water in front of witnesses, there's a seal and the spirit comes on them. And if you're open, you could be filled with the Spirit, you could be refilled with the Spirit, you could be healed if you have a bad habit, you can be delivered. I've seen people throw their cigarettes away, throw all these things away, coming out in newness of life. And you say, does the water do that? No! God does that. The water symbolizes God. And I stuck my hand in it. And the anointing God went into that water, and it's not just water, it's living water. So we're going to have fun, aren't we? Let's look at our scripture. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38 through 47, I'm going to read that rather quickly. It says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized, or immersed, or dunked into the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Who takes our sin away? So when you get born again, the Holy Spirit takes you and puts you into Christ, just like into that tub of water. Even though you don't know it and feel it's in the physical realm, in the spirit realm, you are literally put into Christ, and God makes you an arm or a leg. God makes you an eye or an ear. God makes you what he wants you to be in the body of Christ. Therefore, you and I, when we find out what that is, we can prosper in the very will of God every day of our life. Say amen. So it goes on further to say, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all that are far off, as many as the Lord God will call. And with many other words, Peter, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. I think there's more, isn't there? Okay. Then those who gladly received his word, you know, they had to receive the word, were baptized. And that day there were 3,000 souls. Wouldn't you like to do that here? 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continually steadfastly in the apostles' teaching doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then the fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now, all who believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as everyone had need. Here's another scripture. So they continued daily with one accord and in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. That's what we do after church. And they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. See, God wants us to be a family, childlike, innocent, pure. Can you say amen? Praising God and having favor. Look at this. Having favor with all the people. That means their neighborhoods were touched. And God added to the church daily such who are being saved. Now, when we do that, God adds to the church. How many know he's the best builder? Psalms 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord build the house. They that labor, labor in vain. I don't build this house. This is not what I'm doing or Linda's doing. This is something that God wants done. And you know, it's funny. He picked it right down the street from the Jehovah Witness National Convention Center. <laughs> you know, well, I look at some people and they, and they say, well, gosh, why did, have, why did God have you here? Well, I, said, I guess he was confused one day. No. <laughs> he put us here to be a light to this neighborhood. Because that's the wrong light. Hello? Amen. That's the exit light down there. <laughs> if you don't know the song, that's all right. Okay, so basically, children of God, family of God, we're going to have a great time in the Word today. You ready? Now, I want to tell you, number one in our notes, there are three baptisms. Everyone say three. Three. Notice I have four fingers. No, three. Three. Okay, let me tell you what they are, and we'll go into them. Now, the word, first of all, baptism means to dunk, to saturate, and to soak. Hello? Now, I'm going to say this for fun. It does not mean sprinkle. 
That's a dedication. Hello. Did you see Jesus sprinkle anybody? We want to do it biblically, and we're not putting anybody else's down, but people that usually dedicate a child or a baby where they're too young to know anything, that's really a child dedication is what that is. And that's okay, and it's absolutely biblical. If you have children you want to dedicate to the Lord, they're still young, do that. Mom and Dad, you can do it. You follow what I'm saying? But baptism means dunk down under to soak. Hello. That means that when I baptize you, we're going to put you under. We're going to teach you how to hold your nose and do all the things that you need to do and just get you under all the way. So God is, you are immersed in God as a symbolization. Say amen. All right. So in going through some of this, so three baptisms. Number one, the most important baptism is being born again. Some people call it the new birth, being born again or being born anew, new birth. Amen. It's really called in scripture, immersed into Christ or being baptized into Christ. So we believe in our heart and we say, Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died and he rose again. I believe in my heart that he is savior. And I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, Jesus is Lord. It says, I shall be saved. Then the Holy Spirit takes me and he places me into Christ in the spirit, not the physical, in the spirit. So your spirit and God's spirit become one. Every, everyone say, I'm one with God. If my head would just figure it out. Exactly. So when God came into your heart, you came into God's heart. This is called being born again. Jesus came into your heart. I'm going to describe it. It's very important. And he removed all the evil out of your spirit person. Say amen. Your spirit man. And now he placed his spirit in there. See, what folks don't realize is how many here drink tea or coffee? You like that? How many here like a little cream and sugar in there? It's okay. You're not sinning. <laughs> But when you put a little cream and sugar in the coffee and you mix it all up, it becomes one, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Well, what God did is he removed Adam's fallen spirit, evil spirit that Satan put in us when we were born in the world. And he put his spirit in us. This is where Christians need to focus inside God-mindedness. Because if you're not aware of God dwelling in you, you won't be confident in life's issues. God dwells in you, sister. Let him rule and reign. Okay? So whenever you get those intimidating thoughts, just no, God lives in me, and I'm on my way to heaven. You have to answer the lies with faith. You see, when fear knocks at your door, faith opens it, and there's nothing there. Fear is false evidence appearing real. That's how Satan rules. Tries to get one over on you. Do you like a good car artist? Sell your shirt off your own back? Tell you you're going to be sick and you're going to die? Start laughing at the dude. That's about all he's got. He's got to get you to believe that he could do that. He's got to get you to believe that he could, he could do all of those things. <laughs> what do we do? We get up in the morning, present ourselves to God, and we follow Jesus. He's already whipped and kicked the devil's head right on in. Everyone say, under defeat. Under defeat. Now look at your left one and look at your right one. There's the face of Satan right there. Keep them under defeat. All right, let's move right along. Second baptism, baptism in water. What that does is it seals the deal in your heart. You're willing to, in front of everyone, show everybody outwardly that I have died to myself, I have lied to Christ, and now I'm going to be baptized in water to prove to myself and to God that I love him beyond love. That's what baptism is about. It's not a ritual. It's about the newness of life. And it's kind of funny because when, when you come to get baptized, you're leaving the world into the water. 
Then you're being submersed into God in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Then you come up in newness of life, and then you go back into the world. Come out from among them, be baptized, and go into all the world to preach the gospel. Say amen. It's not a ritual. It's an absolute step-by-step -step miracle, baptism of water is. All right. So the second baptism, baptism of water. Third baptism is what a lot of people get confused in. That's the completion or baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said this. He said that... I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So we want to be born again, say amen, that gets us to heaven. We want to get water baptized because it's commanded. I mean, if you didn't, you still go to heaven. But it's commanded that you do it to seal you and to tell Satan he's a loser. You like to tell the devil he's a loser? Just by your actions. You don't have to rail on them. And then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Here's the neat thing. When you get born again, Jesus puts you into Christ. I mean, the Holy Spirit puts you into Christ. But when you get Spirit-filled, Jesus puts you in the Holy Spirit. And by one Spirit, we're all baptized into one body. But Jesus says, in that day, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So there are three. We'll cover them a little later, okay? Just give you the idea. In the Old Testament, see, I'm not in the Old Testament, but we experience it. They had seven baptisms, seven of them. Could you remember them all? And when I was in Israel, a lot of the, the Jewish people would go down to the Sea of Galilee, because I stayed in, in, uh, in, what's the name of that? Tel Aviv, and that's right next to the Sea of Galilee. And, and I was watching that they'll lead themselves right out into the water, and they'll dip themselves seven times, each one for a cleansing. Aren't you glad we don't have to do that? Or maybe you do. You go into the shower and dip yourself. <laughs> but the idea is in, in the New Testament, there are three that we follow, all dealing with our walk with Jesus in newness of life. Baptism, being born again, being baptized in water, and being, if we allow it, allowing Christ to baptize in the Holy Spirit. You see, I speak in tongues. I speak with the evidence of fire and tongues. And that little language is a fan. It will generate the power of God. Now, whether or not you want to speak in tongues or not, it's up to you. Now, I'm not putting anything down. Just listen to me. You already have that language in you. You had it when you were a baby. You were filled with the Spirit when you were a child. But see, when you got old enough to know the difference between right and wrong, I'll tell you, the children have to come to Jesus and make a decision then. You see? And if they're raised in a godly household, they came automatically up on the altar. I can remember. Wendy, can I share? Okay. I remember I was preaching away, and then I gave an altar call. This is a big church. My other church was over 500 people, okay? You know, God's small beginnings, but it's all right. And I preach, and I gave an altar call. And my, my daughter starts wandering towards the stage, and the usher's going, they started going over to stop her. I says, don't stop her. She's responding to the call of God. There's a time when young children know that they need to call on God. You see, and when mom and dad are doing the right thing, the children know about God, and it's just a natural pull. My son did the same thing first, then my daughter, almost repeated. Not only that, but my, 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 my daughter and my son both got filled with the Holy Spirit when they were five and six, speaking in tongues. Why? Because there wasn't any of this misunderstanding in their brain yet. That'll come later in life when we get around people who take it upon themselves to speak into your life when you never ask them. Moving right along. I was funny. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> Why do you do that? I make you think. I want to make Christians think. Look up. Look up. More godliness with us than could ever be with the devil. The trouble is we're looking at the plane of life. We're thinking that's it. No. Look up. That isn't it. This is just a vapor. Make the best of it, but don't camp on this side of the river. Hello? This side of heaven. We're going to cover these four areas. Number one, 
We are vessels of honor. Never forget that. God purposely and wanted to design human beings as being a vessel or container of honor. Say amen. You'll find this in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 where it says, God predestined for all of us to be before him in love. But Adam messed that up. Hello? So God's purpose is always to bless us. Can you say amen? We were the only creation, listen to me carefully, that was created in God's image after God's likeness and was not created a servant or a slave. God had servants. Did you know that? They're called angels. They serve God's will. Now we think servant. Yes, every creature that God made except for mankind are all service to God. Can you say amen? And we know a little group broke off, Lucifer and his bunch, and they're held captive in this earth. That's why this earth is so bad. God's going to finish his dealings with them. But he won't let those evil spirits off of this planet. So we're not being visited by any aliens. It's the same nasty devil and his bunch that visited the Garden of Eden and caused Adam and Eve, our father, physical father, to corrupt. Satan's whole job is to corrupt you, to make you dishonest, to make you lie, to make you not pay attention, because the naturalness of Satan's sin and our flesh will naturally ruin our life. If we can keep us away from God and fellowshipping with God, then we will naturally rot. You know, like that little compartment in your fridge that's called food rotter, <laughs> where you put it out of sight, and ah, something's growing out of there. Folks, if we don't daily saturate and get some closeness to God, we, our skin and our flesh will start rotting. You know what somebody said to me today? I don't know how to take it. But they actually said, I look younger today than I did a year ago. Well, naturally, I was having my foot removed, and I'm going through the stress and everything. But you know what? When you live in the kingdom, when you fellowship with God on a daily basis, when all your ways you acknowledge him and you trust him, God just surrounds you with good things. Anybody testify to that? Yeah. Amen. I can't hear you. Yeah. yeah. Why are we telling everybody this lifestyle? You can have it too. That's what we are. We are a witness of the lifestyle of God's life in us. All right, we'll cover these four areas. We are vessels of honor. Number two, there are three baptisms. Baptism in the new birth, water, and the Holy Spirit. Number three, we're going to leave the old and learn to embrace the new. This is where Christians are failing. They're trying, now listen carefully, they're trying to live for God naturally. How many know that at your best day, you will be far short of pleasing God? Yeah. It says, for, for all have come short from pleasing God. That's why we need Jesus in us to lift us up to the pleasing factor. Can you see? Amen. Because we want to. We want to be with God, but there's something in our members that keeps warring against our soul. That's why we meet with God and we crucify our flesh. So that that little mouthy thing called the flesh shuts up, that becomes quiet, and your spirit man and your walk with God becomes loud and clear. Say amen. amen. You'll know what to do when you're with God, because he will tell you what to do, how to do it, and the finished product of what was done. How many here like that kind of stuff? I'm living that kind of stuff, and I didn't do it. You're living that kind of stuff. We're, remember, we're washing out all the unbelief in our thinking, all that nasty stuff all our life. They've been put in there purposely, and every once in a while it sticks out, and you just have to throw it down. Say amen. amen. Casting down imaginations. And the last thing we're going to talk about is we're going to walking in him and with him. Did you know this morning when you got up, you got up in God? Did you know that? Did you say, hey, God, I love getting up in you, and I love, Father God, getting up with you. 
Let's have a good date together. Do you agree, God? There's a, there's a little thing to use. I'm just using my words if you want. I love the fact that I get up in God. Yeah. Let's look at the book. You get up in you, and you get up in God. Who do you have on your mind? What is on your mind today? What have you been thinking about? And God says, hello, hello. Oh, you recognize I'm with you. Because we're not trained to be God-minded. We're not trained to be spiritual-minded as much because the enemy's worked hard on society. You know he has. Look at the mess out there. So we focus on God, so he gives us the wisdom. That wisdom is so beautiful. He'll give you the right words to say to your daughter, to say to your grandchildren, to say. And before, you didn't have them, but then they came. Walk with God is the most beautiful thing you can do. And the most beautiful thing I can teach is teach you to be with God, that God may call you a friend. You ready? Point one. We are vessels of honor. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse 20 through 22. I'm going to step down and get my water real quick. You can tell I'm just a real polished minister. You know, turn my back on you. You know, trip. Boom. You know, no, I'm not going to. I didn't know that for that. How come the doctors always ask you when you come in the doctor's office, when you're past 60, they say, have you fallen? What, do you want me to? I watched a movie the other day, and this person was doting over this little child. And he says, are you all right? And he looks up to this adult, and respectfully, he says, why does everybody ask me if I'm all right? Are you all right? <laughs> it was the cutest thing I ever saw in my life. A little child, are you all right? Why are you asking me if I'm all right? I used to have a teacher, a Bible teacher, and he used to use it as a tactic. He says, okay, God's going to get you. What have you done? And I says, well, number one, I took you off my Christmas list. <laughs> Moving along. Why did you say? Because a lot of times people want to manipulate. Society wants to form you into their world. And we live for God. Can you say amen? All right. We are vessels of honor. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. But in a great house. Everyone say great house. Yes. Now, what is that house? That's the earth. Let me teach you what I mean. In John 14, it says, in my father's house are many mansions. The earth was made originally like heaven. And Adam and Eve were put in it to prosper the place. Of course, there's devil running rampant now. But he says, in a great house, he's talking about the earth. Now look what he says. Who are the vessels? Human beings. Okay. So the vessels are human beings. Remember the ten virgins? Five foolish, five wise. They filled their vessels with oil. So you are a vessel. You're a container. You could be filled with good things, or you could be dwelling on the bad things and be sour and nasty. Whatever you decide to fill yourself with every day of your life. We choose God. See, amen. So in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, finds Jesus in his heart, he will be a vessel of what? A vessel for honor. And, and it says sanctified, set up, word sanctified means set apart and useful for the master. Who's the master? God, isn't he? Okay. And it says prepared for every good work, flee, here's the key, flee youthful lusts, and, but pursue righteousness, being right with God, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. So say in a great house. There are good people and there are bad people. Do you want to model your life over the bad people? No. In fact, we shouldn't be looking at people. Christians wrestle over 
Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Judge not lest you be judged. With the same measure you judge somebody, it shall be judged back to you again. So we look at it, somebody, and what do we do? We formulate an opinion of them before we even know them. So now we see them through the eyes of how we look at them and not through the eyes of how God wants to present them. Ding, 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 ding. That's worth a million bucks right there. Value truth, okay? Not because I preached it, just because. Okay? We are to be discerning. Pick our friends. Pick the people we want to hang around. But if we're not discerning, you're going to get burned. Hello? How many has ever gone out to eat? And you did not pray and ask God, is this going to be a good place or not? Well, why should I do that? God's busy. Yeah? How was your plate, Bunky? Was it so hot, was it? We need to pray about everything. We're God's kingdom. You know, for a while, I was watching what happens to my life. And it seemed every time I got out, like I, if I go and order something from a restaurant, they would always get it wrong. Everybody else's would be right. But mine would be wrong. Why does that thing happen? Listen, every once in a while, there'll be times in your life where it seems like little things happen a little too much. I'm talking to you. That's a spirit that does that. Just bind it up and say, no, no. No, you're not going to harass me. Now, I don't know if you know anything, but um, there's a, a name for a mischievous spirit out of Babylon in the Samaritan texts. You know, I don't read them as a Bible. But it's called, he's called Noki. Anybody heard of Noki? Noki's the mischief maker. And he will attach himself to you, and he will cause little things to irritate you and frustrate you. And if it's happening a lot, bind it up, take authority over it. That's not just something that just happens. No, you'll find out later on as we study, Satan will assign things to you to try to get you discouraged. When they do, when that happens, don't freak out. You're not any better than Jesus. Smile and say, I know something good's going to happen because the thief is trying to steal my attention away from receiving from God. Did you get it? Ding, 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 ding. I'm sorry, I'm just being obnoxious. All right, move right on up. So, okay, look at this. In a great house, therefore, let's do this. Second Corinthians chapter 4, 7, look at this scripture. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Who are you? You're an earthen vessel, aren't you? And look what it says. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So you're full of it. God, say amen. Let him reign. Reign in life with him. And Lord, teach me how if you don't know how. A couple of points. Number one, the earth is a great house, a dwelling place for human beings. It was designed for that. There are a variety of vessels or people in the earth. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. The reason why we have so many different colors is God loves variety. They're still made in God's image. Hello? I mean, if we all look like me, what a boring time. <laughs> if I all acted like me, you know. Oh, my. Two, God has set life and death before you and I and before every human being. Then he says, you choose life that you and your offspring may live. Can you say amen? Thirdly, we... We're all cleansed, and when we got born again, we became useful for the master's work. We have to stay in that condition. Everyone say, stay in that condition. Stay. Now, you don't want to go to work looking like you just got off the bus. You don't, don't understand that statement? People that look like they've been living on the street for two weeks, you don't go to work in that looking condition, do you? Of course not. 
No, as Christians, we're supposed to shine. If you read some of the old scripts that were talked about God's people, and they talked about the, the Israelites a lot, and, and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, how mighty he was, their nickname for all the other peoples of the earth for the Christian Jews was the shiny ones. Everyone say shiny ones. You are shiny ones. See, and that was hidden. That was hidden from us. Because God is light, and in him is... We're the shiny ones. Who, who lives in us? God, the light! So let him out, shiny ones. It's the light that comes out of you that kills Satan. That annihilates him. It isn't that frowny face like you, you've been under a rock and hell's breaking loose. It's going to frighten anybody. Hello? It's going to be a smiley face, a happy face, somebody loving God. And immediately the enemy is going to freak out. We've got a problem. Uncle Screwtape, we have a problem. Somebody's getting on fire for Jesus. Do you have a good wet blanket we could throw on them? Fourthly, seek and pursue God every day. Don't stop that. Say amen. So say, I'm a vessel of honor. And I'll continue to be a light bearer. Okay. Second point. There are three baptisms. We covered this a little briefly. We'll just do it quickly. Go with me. I'll show you where this is at. Hebrews chapter 6, 1 through 3. Now here, the, the author of Hebrews, which is Paul, but he didn't sign his name on it. You see, Paul was an outcast to many Jews. The apostle Paul that God saved and placed became an outcast to many Jews, and they went around trying to discredit him and corrupt his ministry. So everywhere he went, people came up against him, attacked him, did all kinds of crazy things. And so he begins and he says right here in Hebrews 6, Therefore, leaving the discussions of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Oh, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Get over that. Let's start following Jesus. And from dead works, you know what a dead work is? It's when you do it, but your heart's not in it. It's a dead work. It's like you're going to your job, and you don't bring God along. Moving right along. This is what the Jews did. They offered God dead works. They were supposed to evangelize the world. When Jesus showed up, they crucified him. Now, I would say that was a little twisted. Now, let's go on. It says, and uh, repentance of faith towards God. He says, your faith towards God is a little thing, yet we think it's a huge thing, because unless we believe in God, there's no hope for us. But he says, let's go on and learn about trust. Did you know faith in God is great? God wants you to have faith. But after a while, when you walk with God and you get to know God, you trust him. There's no grunt faith. I'm believing God for things. It's, Lord, I thank you that they're on their way. It's a trust. It's a relax. It's a passive. For example, Jesus went to sleep in the middle of the storm in the boat where everybody else was freaked out. What was he doing? He was trusting his father to go to the other side. How about you? Heaven's the other side. Jesus is in your boat. He's going to take you to the other side. Just settle down and stop being a fish without water. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? Never panic, never freak out. Jesus is in charge. Put him in charge. And if it doesn't seem like it's in charge, come in and take charge. Remember I told you about those two officers? And I was at this store, and they were, they were doing the F-bomb and all these cussing and everything like that. And I saw these beautiful badges and the guns and everything, and these two people looking like they fell off the bus. I just took charge. I got out of my car, and I says, you! I freaked them out. I says, you know, I see something wonderful. I see officers, people t protecting the store. But then I hear all this foul stuff coming out of your mouth. What's wrong with that? You said it just like that? Yeah, that's called taking dominion. 
over something that's out of order. Don't let the devil run rampant through your job, through your life. Don't let your friends start turning on you. Take authority over it. All right, let's move to our next point. Okay, so there are three, three baptisms. We know that they're born again, water baptism, which we're going to display today, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. So let me show you my illustration. Can we get a beat of a camera on us? Yeah, make sure you don't get that one I hate. Don't get that bad one on there. <laughs> then we have a camera that shows empty chairs all the time. Oh, you great crowd, hallelujah! And there's four people sitting there. <laughs> hey, nobody follows a hearse. They follow fire engines. So you better get a little lively. Do you understand me? Okay. All right, here's an empty vessel. I'm going to do this rather quickly. This is like a human being that's born. Okay. They have a place inside this vessel for God to dwell. But because of Adam's sin, it's empty. And we go through life. Somebody shares a little Christ with us. Mom and dad shares. Maybe a brother or sister shares a little Christ. You find a track in the bathroom. And now all of a sudden, you start to open up. Satan has got the race of humans closed off to God, thinking that God is the one causing the problems in this planet. He is not. Human beings and Satan is the one that's doing it. If it's bad, it's not of God. And so they're running through life, and then enough stuff was shared to pop, their will pops off. Wow! And now they're at least open to the thought of God. Comes along, like me, and I go to a party. And in the party, there was a guy came out of prison who had just gotten born again in prison. And he shared Christ with me. At that time, I'd sobered up, and I'm sitting there. And when he was sharing Christ with me, the house was rattling, the trees were banging. Everything in the world was trying to pull me away from what he was sharing, but I was glued on him. And he popped open that cork. And man, now it was open to God. I was curious about God. And the Bible says, if seek in you shall. So God got a little hook in me and started bringing me to himself. And of course, being an entertainer, I played a lot in Pendleton, Oregon. We would book the gig for a month. That means partying for a month. Well, these guys from the March of Dimes asked me, would your band come and play our band quit? And I said, oh, why not? We'll come play and rock it out. So we went. There were people holding hands in circles, praying for us. These hippies playing rock and roll music for their March of Dimes. Guess what happened? Pop! Here I am. I'm headed home. I'm going to give my life to God. Everything in the world got in the way. How about that loved one you have at home that always says, I want to go to church, but everything in the world's getting in the way? Bind that up in Jesus' name. All right, so now they're open, right? And they say, okay, God, Lord, I want Jesus in my heart. So they have to believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is truly Lord. Once they do that, the Spirit of God comes into them. Say amen. And so they give their heart to the Lord, and they are baptized into Christ. They're filled with the living Spirit of God. They're on their way to heaven. Okay, say amen. But then sister so-and-so calls you a name. <laughs> and your, your boss told you you got a wart on your nose. <laughs> We're looking kind of empty there. And naturally, the old man kicks in and starts to take over and react the way the old man used to. But no, what we need to do is daily we go in and we tank up. Because we know during the day, there's going to be drips. And then we go tank up. And during the day, you might have something terrific to happen. You go tank up. 
The fact that you don't shows you that Satan is working hard to keep you from who God wants you to be. Say, so, okay, so now we're walking with God. We got you to the point where Christ has formed you. You finally make church faithfully. You just made the first step. Here you are. Now you want to get baptized. What baptism of water is, is you approach the water, it represents God, the living water. We go down to the water, down to the water. God is always represented in many things, but one of them is living water. John chapter 4, verse 34 says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There, you see, you're connected to heaven. See, you got an umbilical cord spiritually right into heaven. And if you'll open your will, God's flow, flowing will always come flow. But see, we don't. We get all, we get all constant, all that, and it just bounces off of us. Hello? You can't bless a brick. So, here comes Colin, here comes Carrie. I want to be baptized. Lord, I have the spirit, but I want to share with everybody that I love God more than anything and that I want him to take over my life and I want him to seal me. So here you are in the world. Here's our baptism tub and showing. Here's Pastor Carrie right here ready to baptize you. We get you and the first thing you do is, Lord, I renounce the world because we're not to love it. And I renounce any sin in my life, any habits in my life that would hold me from you touching me and being the Lord of my life. And so the Bible says, can renounce sin and then pronounce. And Lord, I pronounce Jesus as my Lord. And so then I go, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. And you come out of the water. And now you take that seal of God and you go back into the world to share your testimony and your, your love to others about the goodness of God in your heart. So you come to the water, we present you, you present yourself before God, and then we dunk you down in the water and you come out in the newness of life, symbolizing what happened when you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, if you don't think you're saved, we'll get you to confess Jesus as Lord before you baptize, because many times we've been at a lake or, or, or at a river baptizing, and people just come, park their cars and come right on down and be baptized. So we get them to confess the Lord first, and then we'll baptize them. Can you say amen? Say, I got it. Got it. Are you ready? Yes. All right. I am so honored to, to baptize you. Okay. So it goes on further to say, and the doctrine of baptism. So there are three baptisms. Say amen. There are baptism, new birth, baptism of the water, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now imagine Jesus one time picking you and putting you into the Holy Spirit. Well, all you see is fire and glory and all this start, and you completely are changed. When we have a service for that, we'll get you baptized in the Holy Ghost, too, if you want. Say amen. amen. Or you can do it at home like my mom or several other people. Yeah. In the, in one then God just gave the language. It just released. It was so glorious. All right, let's move to our... In Galatians 3, 26 through 29, I'm past Hebrews 6 now. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many you have put on Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse
you say amen? amen. Besides, it leaks too much. <laughs> All right. Then the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you want to read about it, it's in Acts chapter 1, listen, verse 4 and 5. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me, that John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And then we know at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. Third point, we need to leave our old life and embrace our new life. Can you say amen? Leave your old life and embrace your new life. You see, when I first came to the Lord, I thought I had to give up everything. And my pastor said to me, son, you don't have to give up sin. It will give you up. You just get close as you can get to God, follow what we're doing here, and you do your best to step by step it out, and God will drive sin from your body like you wouldn't believe. He'll drive ugliness out of your life. You just keep going to God, and he'll keep fixing you. So, son, you are a case that needs to be fixed. So don't keep yourself from the fixer, from the one that restores us, from the one that created us, the one that has all the functioning ideas of what we do. If you keep from that, you'll continue to have a rough time, and your Christianity won't be a good testimony. We don't want that. Can you say amen? So leaving the old life and embracing the new. Romans chapter 6, 1 through 4. We're almost done. Okay, so what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer there in it? Or do you not know that as many as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? You're supposed to be dead. Jesus is supposed to be living through you. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall be raised in newness of life. Baptism. Let's look at the next scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, look at this, verse 22 through 24. That you put off. Your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt. How many here know your flesh is getting corrupt? Now, folks, it doesn't mean it's getting uglier. I, I forget that word. Let me use another one. We're getting older. Aging is corruption. We were never meant to age past 30. Live forever. And we will. But this body has to be shed like a cocoon. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, it says, this body will be changed. Corruption will put on incorruption, and death will be swallowed up in victory. You want to find that? It's 1 Corinthians 15. Amen. So, there's an old part of us that we keep trying to kick in, clumsy bumsy, wants to be the hardy partier. I'm just using phrases. I want to be my own man. Go to church, buddy, and learn about God. He's the man's man. Anyway, so listen. That you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness, right doing, and holiness. Everyone say holiness. Holiness. Holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness. Holiness is what you want for me. See, holiness does not mean without mistake. It means set apart for God, family. To be holy means set apart for God. It doesn't mean polish yourself till you got holes in it. Or be so tight that nobody can get along with you. No, holiness means that you are given to God. Paul says, I betrothed you 
to Christ like a woman that's a virgin to him. Hello. That's what I do with you. I look at your God's children. I better watch how I handle you. Can you say amen? And God has betrothed you to his son. I used to say all the time, stop dating the Lord. That's those people that keep falling down and then you pray, oh, God, I'll never do it again. You're dating the Lord. Marry him. And finishing. Walking in and with him. Everyone say walking in and with him. Back to Romans 8, please, if you go to Romans. I, don't, I couldn't get all my notes, but we gave, people are being baptized in notes, and anybody who wants them, make sure you get some. They're not all that good, but they cover a little more than what I can cover up here. Walking in and with him. Romans 8, verse 10 and 11. And if Christ is in you, how many here have Jesus in your heart? And if Christ is in you, the body is dead. Now, what he's saying is you should be responsible enough to go to God and say, Lord, I lay my flesh at your feet, crucify it. This is your presentation to God. How many know that we're to present ourselves daily, first thing, to God? Lord, I come to you and I greet you, Father. Take this flesh and shut her down. Amen. I'm on my way to work and I can't pray a whole lot, but I present myself to you, dedicate the day to you, blah, 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 blah. It's covered. God honors that. This is not to take the place of that time, that holy time, where you spend good long times with God. This is making sure God is first, God is in place, and that you're fully protected in your day. You present yourself. You read Job 1 and Job 2, it says, when the angels came in to present themselves before the Lord. If they did, we do. And what is it the church doing? They're having church, but they're not presenting themselves before the Lord. Not all of them. That makes the difference. Just a little greeting in the morning. Crucify this flesh. Are you still with me? Okay, so it literally says, okay, you're dead to sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, someone say amen. amen. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit that is in you. So in other words, you ask God to crucify your flesh, you lay it at his altar, he sanctifies it, he zaps it, and he makes it your servant, because guess what? Your spirit didn't grab your cereal in the morning. It was your flesh grabbed your cereal in the morning. Hello? And it's your flesh that grabs an extra bowl of cereal in the morning. <laughs> So it's your servant. You make your flesh your servant by presenting it to God, having to crucify it, and then it comes up and it serves your spirit man. It's not going to want the bad stuff. Can you say amen? Then it goes on and says, in Galatians 5, look at this one. In Galatians 5, verse 16, and this is my last scripture, I promise. I say then, walk in the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the desires or lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, capital S, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit against the flesh, these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you want to do. In other words, who's winning, the old man or the new? Yeah. New man, new man. Colin, who is it? New man. So we feed the new man, we starve the old man. Feed the new man, starve the old man. I'm tired, so what do you do? You go and do some of the old man stuff. Is that going to make you any brighter? No. We do what God wants us to do. Listen, you do what God wants to do, and your life will not have a disappointment. Only disappointments in our life are the ones that we did thought it was God. 
The only disappointments we have are when we did it and thought it was God. So just pray about everything. Amen. For their contrary, for you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under that law. What law? Curse. Did you know there's a curse in the earth? Read Deuteronomy 28. Curse and blessings. Now Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Which means if we walk in the newness of life, we won't have a curse working on us. But if you have resentment in your heart, you're bitter. If you talk bad about your pastor, what'd you have for lunch? I had the pastor. People do that. They get to doing all this. Then you come under a curse. Because the umbrella is grace. Can you say amen? amen. And if it's raining, umbrella good. <laughs> Stay under it. Now, we're about to baptize and get everything ready. Are you ready? How about your heart, those of you who want to be baptized? Now, just to let you know, because this door rolls up. So the people in here can watch what's being baptized there. So I'll need to help some guys help roll that up. There's two locks on it, so make sure you undo them before you rip the things out of the... <laughs> <laughs> it comes up. See, this is this is place is just... All this is is an entertainment center place. The doors roll up. We can put tables out there. We can have concerts. We can do all kinds of stuff. And we're going to have baptism. So, Lord bless you and keep you. I hope I gave you enough understanding for you'll get the most out of your baptism, the most out of your walk with God, and you'll be blessed. If you got the got something, give the Lord praise, will you? How many? Know